Hello there, we're back again and this time we're going to paint this rural house facade. It looks like a kind of old garage with a wooden door and an arch. This set includes a light that hangs over the door here and a few posters that you can place on the door or anywhere you want but maybe around here They have been pre-weathered, but we'll do a little more work on them later with the oils and the enamel. Anyway, we'll get to that in a bit. As always, we're going to start with a coat of primer. I've already got my airbrush ready, and just like in the previous videos, I'm going to start by adding some thinner. I've filled it to a bit less than half, and now I'm going to add my primer. I've also got my cleaner here in case I need to clean the nozzle at all. As you know acrylic paints leave more residue than lacquer paints, so it's a good idea to have some cleaner to hand in case the nozzle gets clogged and you need to clean it out. Now I've added the primer, I can stir it a bit with a brush. and get to airbrushing the primer over the facade. This should always be your first step when working on resin. You need to make sure you have a good coat of primer down. Here is everything that comes in this set. This is a rounded number two brush. This is a flat number four brush. This is the grey primer I've already used to prime the facade. And finally this set of colours here that I'll use to add colour on the one hand and contrast on the other. In other words, the deep green, brick red and dark flesh will add colour. While the white and black will create contrast, light, shadows and other effects. After that, to finish off, I'll use this streaking grime for some weathering effects. That said, I will warn you now that I will probably use other few extra things along the way. Let's apply a base paint layer to the wall here. As you can see, I've painted a couple of areas already. Let me just explain how I did that. It's a type of very light wash using these three colours that I'll show you in a second. Do, to do the work, I'm using the brush and the sponge. The colours need to be very, very diluted with plenty of water. I'll put the black one in one space here, the white in here, and the flesh colour in here. I'm only using a tiny bit of paint because I'm only going to apply a very thin layer. So then I add some water. I'm going to make a few combinations using these colours to make some other colours for the facade. Let's see, I'm going to take some white and put it over here. And now I add a tiny drop of black to create this greyish colour. Let me zoom in and show you a bit closer. It's becoming like a yellowish grey colour, something like that. Here I have that same grey but with a touch more black. Let me add a little more white. And now I'll add a touch of the grey to the white to create this set of colours. You see? Right now time to apply them. I'm going to start by applying a white base, very diluted. I'm going to work from crack to crack so you can see what I'm doing, okay, in sections.
Right, I'm going to let that dry a bit and I'm going to add a touch more white because I want it a bit lighter. And I'm going to go back over it with the new white. The paint is very diluted, okay? I get a bit of colour, I take the sponge, dry it and dab on some of that colour and this other one. You need to dry it properly. Right, while, while that's drying, I'm going to carry on. Okay, that's that bit done. I'm going to carry on painting all the stone in this kind of ochre colour around the yeah. I've made a slightly lighter shade than the one I was using before by adding a touch of white paint for these stones here. Let me just paint them now. Okay, while that's drying, I'm going to do a little test so I can paint all this upper section, these bricks here. I'm going to try and make an orangey colour. I'm going to use the brick red and I'm going to add a bit of this one, a touch of dark flesh. Okay, so now that's done, I'm going to paint the bricks in this colour. As you can see, I've finished painting the bricks, I've painted all the stones, and I've applied the acrylics to the facade in a number of different ways. If you look, you can see I used the sponge in some areas by dabbing it on the surface, using various shades of grey, the ochre, etc. What I'm going to do now is apply a little dry brushing with some white, which I already have ready, over the cracks on the facade. You can use any flat brush you have lying around and the idea is to dry brush over the cracks in order to highlight them a little. You need to brush them like this to make them stand out. The next step is to apply a kind of wash but just on the cracks to give them some depth. I'm going to use white spirit as my thinner and the enamel included in the set, which is this streaking grime. I take some thinner on my brush and apply it like this. I'm applying it to the top area here and after that all I will need to do is spread it out using the thinner like this. I'm going to be focusing on the areas around the cracks as I said before. I'm just going over the cracks here and after I clean off the brush I can spread it out some more. So if you look now you can see that I've more or less finished the wall. I've applied that wash to the cracks and a little in other places to create some shadows around the facade. Now I'm going to do the sides here so you can see how I use the enamel to create some shadows. The 
For the door, I'm going to apply the enamel so that it kind of stains the wood, okay? So let's do that and you'll see later, just by using some thinner, we can stain the planks. Then I'll let it dry with more of the product on some of the areas. But this will let me create the paint flaking effect later on the wood that I want. Now I'm going to do some dry brushing on all the stones around the arch. I've made a mixture using the white, this flesh colour and the black. To make sure I don't go over the edges, I'm going to use some tape, masking tape, which I'm going to put around the door. So this is how you do this. I take some paint on my brush, I dry it on a cloth, kitchen roll or whatever you want, and then you just brush over the surface like this. Try to brush from top to bottom so the stones start taking on this colour. The idea is to create a dirt effect. Vertical strokes are the key. Well as you can see I've carried on with a little more dry brushing on these bricks up here too because this will highlight the ridges for a nice effect. I've dry brushed this bit of cement here too for a bit of depth and a little on the stones here as well. Above all I focused on this part here at the bottom. Let me show the result of a little test I did so you can see how I'm going to treat the arch around the door as well as the wood itself. The thing is I used some extra materials, these chipping fluids to be precise. These acrylic fluids work like a lacquer, I mean a hair lacquer. You apply it to the paint, then you apply a coat of paint over the top and then with a brush you rub the surface with water. This makes the acrylic fluid come off and when that comes off it takes the paint with it to produce this chipped effect you see here. This can be very useful when trying to reproduce certain textures or different weathering conditions for the paint. So now I'm going to apply this to the door arch and then the colour over the top, which will be red. After that, with water and a brush, I'll start chipping the paint, okay? Because I'm going to use a sponge, I need to use masking tape around all the edges. So I'm going to add the tape and then I'll show you how to apply the paint. Let's apply this chipping fluid. You normally apply liquids with an airbrush, but I'm just going to use a standard brush. It works just as well. You just need to make sure it covers the whole surface. I've made a mix of red and white because I want to apply a first coat that is more pinkish, and then I'll add another one that is more red. I've not diluted the paint at all, no water for this. I'm just going to dip the sponge, dry it a bit and apply the colour. You just need to dab the sponge onto the surface. Well I can see the paint's not covering very much. So I'm going to grab the brush for a bit. The same technique with the brush, 
dip it in a paint, no water, and apply the colour. Now that I've finished that step, I'm going to move on to the red. Let's put that in another space so it doesn't mix with the white. Then I can use the same technique as before and the same sponge. There's no need to use a different sponge. Now, using water and a brush, or a toothpick, or a needle or whatever, what you do is soak the paint in the water and then start rubbing. Just take a look at what happens. When I rub the paint, the chipping fluid softens and comes off completely, taking the paint with it. As you can see, the result is quite realistic. It's more or less the effect I was looking for. That paint chipping effect, both on the white bit I painted earlier and around the arch. Now I'm going to apply another wash with the enamel. I want to highlight all the joints, and then I'll carry on with the wood. As I apply it here in the corners, you can see how it starts spreading on its own. By using the wash or the enamel, not only can I apply the wash, but I can also start creating shadows and highlighting certain parts of the piece for more volume. Right, I want to show you something now. Take a look around the, the cracks here. You can see I've been highlighting both the bottoms and the tops, as well as creating some other cracks elsewhere. I've made a mix of white and a touch of cream to make this very light colour. Using that very light colour and a very thin brush, because you will need a very thin brush for this, I'm trying to follow the edges of the ridges, uh, the cracks, both along the bottom and later along the top. You might also want to add some paint chips in certain places. Just tap the brush on the surface to make it look like the paint has chipped, revealing the material underneath. Now I'm just going to work on a few of the extra details. Firstly I want to paint this lamp green. I'll use the green that comes in the set. There's nothing complicated here. Just apply the colour as diluted as you want using a thin brush. The one that comes in the set is fine. I'm painting it green, but you can paint it whatever colour you like of course. Right, this is what I want to do for the wood. I've made a series of colour mixtures here, okay? Quite a light green here using the ochre and the green. This one shade of grey, another darker shade of grey, almost black. And this is the beige I use for the cracks, etc. I'm going to apply these colours like filters to the wood. Let me explain. I'm going to dip the brush straight in the pot and make a series of filters over the wood planks. It doesn't matter if the paint doesn't completely cover the surface.
with a bit of the flesh colour so you can see the consistency I'm using here. I'm going to add a lot of water. I'm going to paint this side here and I'll start at the top making it darker. I've been creating some wood grain effects on the planks. You need a very fine brush for this, okay? Otherwise you won't even notice it. I'll need to perfect the work as we go, but for now I've just applied some of the colours. Now I want to show you a couple of more additional materials. We're going to apply some more filters to the wood. I'm going to use this oil and this other one to create a series of filters and contrasts taking us a little more towards brown. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to apply the oil to the wood but only in certain areas. I'm going to carry on for a bit, okay? And then I'll leave it to dry before getting back to the acrylics. Things have moved on quite a bit now. I'll tell you later how I made all these weathering and shading effects. But this right here, I did using the chipping fluid as I did down here for these details too. I've applied the fluid to this part of the door but I've not painted over it yet. You'll see how I do that in a moment. And down here I have painted over the fluid so it's just ready for the water like I did around the arch. I've also made a mesh to go in the hole up here at the top. And I finished painting the lamp. For that I used a rust colour and some green. Using a sponge I dabbed some of that rust colour over the green when I finished. And underneath, as you can see, it's white. Now I'm going to show you how I apply the paint over the area where I've already applied the chipping fluid. I'll use an orange paint for this and I only want to apply it to the top of the door. Now let's see how the chipping works. I'm going to use some water and you'll see how the paint starts coming off. Look at that. With the slightest touch of the brush, and it's a soft brush, the paint's coming right off. So the door is more or less finished now. I've stuck the vent on up here using a little white glue and I'll apply a bit of wash to the edges later. Now I want to stick on these posters. For that I'll use a bit of white glue and dilute it slightly with water. You need to spread this glue mix over the area where you want to stick the poster. And then you just need to put the poster in its place.
All the posters are dry now, and all the colours are more or less dry too. Now I'm going to do exactly what I did around the edges, but to the door itself, which is apply some washes in certain areas. I'm going to start adding shadows and shading to the grooves so they, so they are more pronounced, let's say. And we'll add an overall wash too, but only to the grooves in the door area. I would add a bit of this material here. It would be an extra shall we say, but this sepia oil is quite dark. I would recommend taking a little bit on the tip of your brush like this and adding it to the wash to make it a little darker. Bit by bit, making it flow into the grooves. Besides washing, look how I can make certain areas darker by adding more of the product in some places than in others. I've glued the lamp on now as you can see. And with this light graining effect down here, I want to simulate some weathering on the wood. And that would be it for the wooden part of the door. I'll need to work a bit on the rust around the posters, but that would be the facade finished. I'm using a very fine brush and I'm focusing on the ridges, the very edges of the individual planks here. Now I'm going to use a couple more extra materials for my rust effects. These are the two oils I will use to help me re reproduce that rust. Take a look at the lamp. And look closely around this poster. And around all the metallic areas as well, like these nails over here. Now I'm going to create a bit of rust around this poster and on the poster itself. I just need to mix the oils together and apply it to the top of the poster here. That's the wooden part practically done now made some final touches to the lamp and the rest. Now I'm finishing off this upper section of the facade with some shading effects. I've got a couple more extra materials and the enamel I used before. What I'm doing with this oil and this product which is a greenish colour enamel is add them to this product I already had to create a series of streaks up here under the bricks. You need to have your thinner ready. Mix the oil with the enamel a bit and drop it into the corner here. Bit by bit as you can see it will start spreading on its own. Then with some fresh thinner, I can create the effect I'm looking for, but only at the top of the piece here. I can create some streaks that I'll touch up later. As you can see, that's the facade finished now, with all the minor details done.
such as the greener areas, the shadows at the bottom, etc. and a few more streaks. The result is quite realistic, I think you'll agree. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop us a like and follow us on our official channels. Thank you very much.